Hi Julia Watts here, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to look at layering stencils. No, not necessarily the layering stencil set, which we will have a look at, but how you can use multiple stencils quite easily uh, on a card. And this is part of our techniques um, collection and you will find lots of them on my YouTube channel, um, which you're on now. Okay, so what we're going to use is we're going to use the Slender Stencil, the Extravagance, which is one of the new Sentimental Yours stencils. And this uh, is an old Sentimental Yours stencil. Uh, it's an oval aperture stencil and uh, it comes with the, the actual aperture, the, the insert as well, or it did. I'm not sure if you can get these anymore. Um, and, and you got there were circles, octagons, Christmas trees, bells, all sorts of, of ones. But I know that a lot of you bought them, so um, this is an idea of how you can use them. So first of all, what we're going to do is this is a six by six piece of white card, and we're going to lay some colour down. And I'm using distress ink just in case I want to stamp on top. It's easier to stamp on top of distress ink than it is. Well, I find it easier than to stamp on top of oxide. If you fall off oxide, you'll find that you go from like a grey tone to black to um, to a black on when it's on the card. Sorry, I'm not sure what the cat's doing. <laughs> so this is Kitsch Flamingo and we're going with a, a, a stencil brush or a, a soft brush, blending brush. And to begin with, depending on how dark the colour is, you don't really see an awful lot. I'm quite impatient with uh, with brushes, but all my distress inks are on brushes and all my oxides are on sponges. So we're just building it up, getting some colour down. And see, I've only put stencil tape or a low tack tape on the top of the stencil. I don't need to put any around the outside because there's plenty of uh, of a gap between this and the edge of the uh, card. I think that'll do. Okie -kokie. Then we're going to swap and we're going to, well first of all there's a, there's a couple of different things that you can do with this. You can take a full stencil and this is the fanciful stencil and so you and you can lift this up and you can pop that in and then you can stencil through that and then that gives you a lovely design but i thought it might be nice just to give ourselves a border within the oval just for a point of difference so let's just grab that out of there so you leave this one in place and we're taking our slender stencil the uh, which one's this extravagance and we're just going to pop it so that it's over there, that side there, like that. So we're only going to get design on this part of the oval. And I think that'll look quite nice. We could extend it and cover the whole thing. But I'm thinking that I just want it on one side. See if I can get the design quite straight. And then we're picking up, this is uh, Wilted Violet that we're picking up now. Again, Distress Ink. You could mix your Distress Inks and your Oxides and have both of them on if you wanted to. So this is obviously only going to ink where the holes are in the stencil. Again, I'm not going to tape it, I'm just holding it in place. Where the ink touches the edge of the stencil you'll get more of a design i think that'll probably do it actually so let's have the reveal there we go Throw it away. so there's our topper so obviously we could put a sentiment on there we could we could do some other stamping on there but I think that's really really pretty um I have got a card that I did do here it is this is with a fairy hugs stent pair of stents well a stencil so this is the circle aperture from sentimentally yours and one of the um fairy hugs stencils 
name escapes me at the moment. And then I've used some fairy hug stamps on top. So you could do exactly the same on here or you could just pop a sentiment. Um, if we wanted to, we could go in and again and extend, like I say, extend that uh, DL stencil if you wanted to. But obviously, instead of using a uh, border, we could have used a complete stencil and covered the whole area. So that's one of the ideas using uh, layering star stencils. We're also going to show you how to use some of Francois Reed's stencils. Uh, this is the uh, torn aperture from Woodaware, and we're going. This comes in multiple pieces, and this this would be the front of an A6 card. So that's how I trimmed it. I'm going to use this piece here. Now you could just use low tack tape, um, but this gives you an even border all the way around, and so it's just a little bit easier. We are going to use low tack tape as well beauty of this is that you can draw around the edge as well if you wanted to so let's just see if we can get that straightish it's very hard when there's a camera in front of me and I'm going to pop all that tape up there and we're going to do it down the sides just because I know how heavy handed I am I hope that's straight. I know it's wonky in front of you, but I always do, I always do everything on the walk. We'll soon find out, won't we? Because it's torn, it's quite... Um, I don't think that's quite straight. We'll go with it, though. We'll go. Right, OK. So all we're going to use on this card is Lumberjack Plaid Distress Ink. Just one, but we're going to do three layers of stenciling. So let's get some colour down to begin with. Lovely deep red. Okay, I think that's good. Then we're going to take Francoise's abstract grid, and this is this has got like a border grid and um, uh, like an A5 size grid. So they're both they're, these are both six by six stencil sets. This is a six by six stencil. I'm going to just lift this up. If we can let's just take that away for now. I'll put it down again in a minute. So you can see we've got, it is on the wonk a bit, but so you can see we've got our background there stenciled in. Then we're going to take our grid, pop our grid in, like so. I'm going to have to wonk it a bit just so that it lines up with the natural background. And we'll put the tape back down again, just so I don't get it over the edge. Literally. <laughs> Camera. Okay. It's just over the edge a bit. Do you want to see if we can get that border in? And then we're going to take Lumberjack Plaid again. And we're going to ink through again. So what will happen is that where the stencil is we're going to get a deeper red and obviously as in where the where the gaps are we're going to get a deeper red and uh, where the actual physical stencil is it's going to stay that lighter red color that was in the background where 
I'm touching the getting grabbing the edge of the stencil it's going to be a little bit more pronounced there so I'm not going to show you what that looks like just yet because we're going to do another layer oh I need that still I'm going to take the fairy hugs um fairy snowflakes stencil and I'm just going to hold that on top I'm not going to bother um, securing it. And then we're going to go through this stencil again with Lumberjack Plaid. So again, where we've got the snowflakes, it's going to be an even deeper red. But where the stencils are, we're going to keep the, the original depth of colour that we had underneath. Obviously, you can take this down if you want to. I'm flying. Let's see if I can do it without doing that. I need a piece of kitchen roll. This is where you might move it, where you're moving your hand around. I've moved it good and proper there. Hang on. Let's pop that back. I can see where that one is. We're going to go with that. to get some snowflakes down the bottom. Okay, that'll do. So you can already see what, we, what we're heading for here. I've got lots of stencils to put in now. So let's do the reveal. It's, it's, so, it's so cool when you use multiple stencils. Isn't that cool? What a cool background. Forget that it's on the wall. Obviously, I've got to trim it because of that there anyway. Um, so, if you want to make that into a card, excuse the poly bag that I've put it in. This is um, Francoise's Christmas Robin. And I've created the background um, exactly the same way. They're on a, a proper A6 card. Uh, and added a sentiment from the Distressed Christmas labels. And I just added a bit of extra colour in from the um, Lumberjack Plaid Distress Ink. So that's that's how you create that background. I'm very happy with that. Okay, so there's two techniques with laying stencils. Now, a few years back, Phil, um, a sentiment to yours, Phil, I'm sure you know who he is, actually bought out with uh, some layering stencils now i haven't got any in stock but i don't know if phil's got any left um but i know that a lot of you have got bought them so uh, i thought we'd have a reminder as to how they work so each set there were stars diamonds and circles three sets all eight by eight and each set had three stencils in so the idea is that they all work together so if i put them all together Hopefully you can see that they stack up like that. But obviously you lay them the colour down in a different way. So let's just very quickly just do one. And this will be you guys getting it out of your stash now because you'll be thinking, oh, I've got those somewhere. I ought to use those. So obviously you can use them with mediums. We're just going to use them with inks. And I'm just marking the edge with a pen so I can know how to line it up when I need to. Oh, we are going to use low tat tape as well. So you do use one at a time. And I don't, I don't know what I did with them because obviously I've moved house, but I probably gave them away all the backgrounds I had uh, with the uh, stencils. But uh, yeah, there were lots and lots away, and they looked fantastic. The ways of using them, they looked fantastic on top of um, acetate as well. So let's just go for three distress inks, just in case we want to stamp on top. So we go mustard seed, spice marmalade, and we go lumberjack plaid again. So you do the lightest colour first. So let's 
let's go mustard seed. I tell you what we could do, we could make it a bit interesting and we could take an aperture stencil as well. Let's do that. And nearly falling off my chair. <laughs> oh dear. Should we, should we adjust that so it's straight? Ish. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Don't you just love it? Okay, right. Oh. So we're going for a um, hexagon. to get that in the right place right okay this is what we'll do is we'll secure that in the middle like so obviously this has come out but we know where it's going to go Mustard seed. Do you want colour on as well? Yeah, we'll do that. Let's fold that back. Let's have colour through this first. Let's go mustard seed through this. Thinking on the fly, just to give you some different ideas. So if we're stuck with mustard seed now, we know that we're going to get a darker colour by going on top of the stencil with the same colour, because we've just done that. Obviously, if you want, if you were, you could actually line that point up so it was better, but I don't want to faff around too much. Okay, so that's our mustard seed. like that fabulous okay that's our stencil number one so bring in stencil number two get rid of that and line it up with the corners there like that And then we'll come in with spice marmalade. Where's my orange? So this is going to do smaller diamonds. We can't really see what's going on yet. I'm going to see if I can get a good depth of colour. We could, you could actually, which would be quite nice, like we did with just using lumberjack plaid, 
you could just use yellow on top of yellow on top of yellow and that's going to give you di the de different depth of yellow on each layer and that would be really cool actually so you do these things and different ideas come as you actually do them so that's let that off and then that second layer and let's go for our smallest layer And then we're going back to Lumberjack Plaid, just so you can see the difference. sure I've gotten through on all of them it's quite hard to see because of the other stencil where we need to go but that should be good now Move this one up and we'll take this one away oh look at that isn't that yummy I like that that makes me so happy isn't that wonderful? I'm very happy with that. See, ideas come off the cuff. So we did uh, that one. Uh, where's the other ones I did? Da, 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 da. Oh, we've done this one. And I've also done the oval as well. So that gives you some ideas of how you can layer, I'll put that one up there, layer your stencils together to give a different look. I hope you found that useful. I thoroughly enjoyed bringing those techniques to you. Don't forget everything that I've used uh, is, except for the aperture stencils and the layering stencils, the eight by eights, uh, are available on my website for shipping to UK addresses. And you can also find uh, products over at uh, Honeypot Crafts as well. Do check out my other videos and uh, like and subscribe if you're not already and um, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for watching. Bye.